And by the way, a piece of that is also figuring out what plan B is. You know, if you're coming home and it doesn't work, so, you know, how do you decide? How do you decide? How do you kind of monitor the situation at home so that you know this isn't working? You know, we have to kind of go back to the nursing home or we have to try to provide some more services. There's that whole cluster of things, like, like what is plan B? Now, I, and in, Debbie. And in that situation, um, you come home from a rehab setting and everybody's unsure or you're unsure if it's going to work in the case that Arthur pointed out. Plan B in that situation was pay for a few days at the rehab setting to see if going home, see if the home was going to really work out. Because if it didn't, you could go back to the nursing home, to the skilled facility and have your plan B right there. And that was the situation um, that we had set up that there would be a plan B. If the home didn't work after two or three days, the gentleman could go right back to the facility. Because they held the bed. Because they held, they the, held bed, the bed, and that right. was plan B. Right. And finally, and this comes up a lot, you know, there, there are, you're, somebody's at home, mom or dad or somebody is at home, and the question is if they go directly from home to a nursing home because they're really having problems. Um, is that going to be a private pay situation right away, right? Uh, if it is a private, let's, let's roll to the, to the uh, next one. Um, if, if you are going to be needing to qualify for mass health, because once again, if you're not, if you don't end up in the nursing home having been discharged from a hospital, then you're not there for rehab, which means Medicare is not paying. So the question is, when are you going to be eligible for mass health, right? If you're heading to the nursing home right from home, how long is the period during which you're going to be on private pay? Because that's about three to four hundred dollars a day. So that's an important question. Um, what are you going to be eligible for? Right? You may be eligible for nursing home care. We just talked about the fact you may be eligible alternatively under the frail elder waiver for stuff that is at home. But what are you going to be eligible for? Who's paying? Medicare, Med Mass Health. You kind of how does all that work? Any particular comments on the, ca the cases of people coming right from home to the nursing home? And the other piece is, if the insurance doesn't cover, what is going to be the cost to you? And included in our summary report that we would put together if somebody wanted to go home would be the cost of all of the services so that you know what your options are. And if you, the insurance is paying, you know exactly how many hours and what they're paying for, which services. If you're paying out of pocket, what are the hours, what are the services, and what are you getting for your money? And then, again, what happens if it doesn't work out? Then we t also put together another plan of this could, if it doesn't work out, let's discuss A, B, and C, and D as another option. Now, I had some other slides where we were just going to, oh, I'm sorry, question. Do you have a question? The question. The, the question is, is the primary care physician made aware of all of this? Yes, they are included and updated. The physician is looking at the medical component. And the physician needs everybody's input to know what's going on. And of course, the physician may say, it isn't good for Mrs. Smith to go home because of this diagnosis and she needs to have a nurse around the clock with her. Absolutely, the physician is always included be discharged or admitted to one of these facilities. And I think that it's very important to know if you're deciding you're going to go home without and go against medical advice, that means you get no services in the home audited by the physician. So that's a big piece when people say they're going to sign out against medical advice. The doctor then is not going to order the VNA to come in. They're not going to order the medicines at the pharmacy. So we have to go back and kind of talk him over and let him know the reasons why you left. But if he writes an order for discharge and you're going against it, he can't just sit down and write all these instructions because you could come back 
and sue him if you went home and you got really sick and said, why did you send me home? Why did you let me go home? So you have to actually sign a form when you're leaving against medical advice. So a lot of times, this really helps your physician because you know they're really busy too, right? And they've got, they're dealing with a whole variety of people of various degrees of sickness. So that to the extent that they're getting input directly from the person that they know is working for you, right? Trying to figure out how that plan is gonna work. It's a lot easier for them to write their plan. And as, and as was mentioned, the, 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 to the extent that the doctor is signing the order, that vastly increases the chance that Medicare or MassHealth or somebody is gonna pay for that if it's medically ordered, right? But the doctor is, it, well, depending on how busy your doctor is, maybe you have one that isn't that busy, <laughs> but for a lot of doctors, it's, a, the, the, it's hard for them to put the kind of time in to figure out this kind of detail, which you could really get from your own person. We had some other slides that we were just gonna put up just to, t just to see if there are any particular war stories uh, regarding those standard situations, but any questions regarding any of that so far? Yes, sir. In the presentation, I heard you say that if you go out to an HMO, it's a kind of ball game. Mm -hmm. What is it? What's the difference? <laughs> HMOs are so very the good. Is how does it, how does how does it how is the system different if you're working through an HMO? Sorry. Um, yes, HMOs manage your Medicare insurance. You still may have Medicare in the red, white, and card, red, white, and blue card, but the HMO is the one who pays out for the doctors, for the labs, x-rays, and anything that you need. The HMOs are also gatekeepers. They decide you have to get permission from your doctor and a referral before you go for an x-ray, before you do an ultrasound, and they are gatekeepers. So they are the ones who will be monitoring your stay at the hospital, your stay at the rehab, and your stay at home. And as what's different is the rehab settings have to send facts of paperwork to the HMOs on a weekly basis about how someone is progressing and how someone is doing to a particular person who is the um, care manager, who is the case manager at the HMO. And that's what makes the difference. You have contact with a person who is making the decisions about can we pay, should we pay, will we pay. Did that answer that question? Mm-hmm. <laughs>